What I've done here is I've brought out all the small parts first because these gloves have some oil on them because uh, I just oiled this and uh, after installing this my gloves will have some oil on it still uh, so you know as much precautions as possible to avoid oil getting on that friction material what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here it's the first part that goes on this does not matter which way it goes you see it's indexed it's not a circle and neither is this shaft so it will spin with the shaft and slide it all the way back if this shaft is excessively oily, you can wipe that down with a rag too. This one's fine. Now you're going to take this pinion gear and note one of these teeth is shorter than the other. You see that cut out? If you look... Sorry, the... It's a little loud. So if you look on this cam gear there's a dot, or at the one position. That's why you need it at the one position is for this dot. This indicates the home position for the distributor. You're gonna to want to slide this. This is just a circle, so it will, it will slide on in any orientation. You're gonna put this on here and keep that black insert, that black bushing within there. You're gonna find that short tooth and you're going to put the short tooth right against the dot. You see there, together there? That's very important. If you don't do that, everything will be upset. And it's that way because that brass plate can only go on in one direction and it's timed by the stop plate here and when this, when a pin goes through the jaws, it's gonna pull this cable here which leads down to this plate, which lifts this trip rod, which drops that plate and then allows the clutch to spin one rotation. There are 10 teeth on this gear and 100 on this gear. So 10 teeth on this gear, one rotation moves it one tenth. There's 10 pins, 10 pin positions. So make sure that dot's lined up. If you get some really weird behavior after doing this, it's because this dot is not lined up. So we're good there. Make sure you put on new gloves before you start taking any of these over to the machine. Uh, just as much, as much precaution as you can against oil getting in the machine because then you'll have to do this all again. So we're just gonna take this over here in through the hole and then we're going to lay them out so first is the brass plate second is the friction disc and then third is the black plate and this goes in the black plate so you see how this is shaped the way it is that indexes onto the pinion gear we're going to first take this this cutout up top is going to go about 12 o'clock now slide it on. That's a little finicky. You need to lock it in to those cutouts. And you may need, with one hand, kind of shake this to rotate the pinion and get it all sorted. There we go, it's locked in. And you want to make sure that this um, stop plate is in front of the brass disc stop. Uh, that will make sure you're at one position. Otherwise, when you start the machine, it's gonna rotate to pin two position, which is which is fine, but you, you really wanna do all your adjustments at one. So just make sure it's back there. Make sure that the fitment is good and tight. If it's too loose, that's gonna have issues, but you see they're turning together. There's no, there's no uh, excess play between the rotation of this and the rotation of the pinion. That would indicate issues. Uh, next up, that one washer, the two thin washers are identical. So then you're gonna take this plastic uh, friction disc and as much as possible handle all these uh, on the outside surface so you're not touching the actual friction surface. Um, and it's not gonna stay here so go ahead and hang it 
off to one side and don't hang it too close because you know there's oil in there and you don't want that. Uh, the next step is to assemble this. Now, if you can read that, it says out. On the other side, you'll have a slightly different profile and it doesn't say out. The plate on the machine is going to be facing this direction. This will be out. So it will be uh, convex facing you. Now take this worm gear and kind of put it in there and then how I usually set these up you see you can set it like that I go with about an eighth inch of plate showing after the end of the worm surface that's about how much you should have and this this will change because what's what's adjusting the tension that this clutch has is this black plate sliding up and down on this worm and that's going to determine the force with which this plate pushes on the friction material and that that determines the tension of the clutch so take these both together you notice that 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 worm is in, in indexed to this shaft so we're gonna take it both together put it on there and holding the worm kind of shake it until it wants to set you can do this one-handed two hands is better but I'm holding the phone and then push it together so you want to line up that plastic gear and then this is really what's holding it all together it's not this this worm is holding the plate which is holding the friction disc and then you want to double check and see we have too much material so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this plate until there is and you'll notice that we're pushing that worm out and so when that worm is held in place with the uh, the nut we're about to put on moving this plate it's going to apply more force so next step is the washer, the nut, sometimes it's a little tricky, just get it hand tight, as tight as you can get it with your hand, and check that spacing again, that's about right, that's a little little too much, but it, it's, it's all within a tolerance. Uh, the clutch spring I set off right here, this does not need to be cleaned. Uh, what you're going to do next, before you put that on, you're going to take your channel lock pliers again, which I've conveniently placed over on the wrong side. Okay, so I took the channel lock pliers and with one hand I grabbed the outside of this, just like when loosening it, and then I gave this about a half turn. Uh, you don't need it very tight just just snug um, you can over tighten it under tightening is not an issue and I'll show you that uh, in a second so you're going to take this uh, this tensioning spring and the first step is to slot the uh, straight part there into the black plate Let's see if I can do that through the camera and one-handed some of these are tricky, so you might need to kind of bend them a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, and, uh, yep, there we go. So, a little tricky, but it's in there. And so you want to look at, next, this line here. You want to remember that it's at about, I'd say maybe 5 o'clock position. And we're going to turn counterclockwise, counterclockwise, one turn. And that's really hard to do with one hand, so I'll be right back. So as you can see, I've turned it one turn and then set it in on this uh, this nut. So what, what's happening here is because I've wound it counterclockwise, it's trying to put tension on this nut clockwise, which is tightening the nut. So if you put that nut too loose, this will tighten it. So you'll, you will have turned it one turn, set it on there, and then it will kind of turn back. At that point, it's just tightening the nut, so go ahead and reset it. Don't touch the nut, just pull it off the nut, let it twist back, and then twist one turn again. If it turns more, then just keep repeating that process until it doesn't turn, and maybe give it a little a little tightening. Anyway, if that nut moves, just do that, um, and that will make sure you don't over-tighten the nut. Now, this is just the standard adjustment. What you need to remember here is that you're not actually twisting the nut. What you're doing is you're trying to twist 
this black plate counterclockwise, which is going to push it down that profile of the worm and push it harder into that friction material. And that is going to determine the force with which it, the, uh, if you look while everything's disconnected, I'm twisting this gear and that is moving the distributor. I'm just moving this maybe a quarter turn. This is moving the distributor back and forth as if I'm approaching the one pin position from, from nine, which is the last position. So if you have prob trouble with the, this is why if you have trouble with the distributor not retracting or extending or fully moving left and right, the force with which this is pushing on that friction plate is determining how hard the distributor can push to those positions. So if there's any oil, you're going to get that out of adjustment. Next step, we're going to put this uh, drive shaft on and then put the clip in. So once again, I, I push the distributor just gently with my hand over towards the seven pin direction and that gave me enough room to put the, uh, the drive shaft in place. Now you see the lines aren't, or the holes aren't necessarily lining up. I can rotate this clutch until that stop plate is against the trip rod stop plate and the holes aren't quite lining up. So what you're going to do is while you're standing here, carefully use your feet this carpet belt in the direction that it normally goes and that's going to slowly turn this gearbox until the holes are lined up. So I'm using my body weight to push to roll this belt down and then this clip should go in easy. There should be very little fighting you from putting that in. Now what I'm going to do is uh, roll it further until it's actually putting tension on the clutch because if you if you were to just turn the lane on with this how it is, it would put a lot of instant pressure on this clip and it might break it. We do have extra, but it's just another, another thing to avoid. So you'll notice what's going on here is I'm going to be turning the distributor gearbox with my feet. And you see that that spring just moved. So I probably need to reset that adjustment or that adjustment will be a little too out, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, how to do that while the machine's running. Uh, and what's preventing this brass plate from moving is this stopper. So if I simulated uh, a pin falling through the jaws, say we're at position one right now, and you'll notice uh, if you try to pull this up, there's a little tension on it. That's because this clutch this clutch is actually putting force on this plate and it's keeping it from easily going down. And that's why if you have this spring too tight, pins don't pass through the jaws of the distributor very easily. So it's a balancing act between how much the distributor wants to go left and right and expand and retract and all of that and how much force it takes to move this trip rod because you can you can make this distributor move fast between positions, but this trip rod is not gonna wanna rotate. That stop plate will not drop because you're just slamming that, that brass plate against it. It won't want to drop. So we're gonna make sure everything's hooked up. With my feet, give it a little rotation and make sure we're all set. I can see that brass plate is stopped by the stop plate and the black plate is moving. We're going to go out of the machine now, make sure the work area is clear, nothing's on any belts. Now we're going to go and turn this machine on to mechanics mode. You're going to turn the breaker on, turn the back end on, press trouble clear if there's a breaker error, and then press mode to turn it into mechanics mode. Um, I sometimes leave the back end off until the light comes on, that way I get to decide exactly when this turns on. So I'm gonna flip the switch now. Pins are going to start moving up. We're gonna see how it runs. Easy for the jaws, quick, quick operation. It retracts easily. 
It shifts between positions before pins reach the jaws. It's a little slow to that 10 position. One thing to note is that where you will find most pileups, I've found, is in between this pin and this pin. That would be pin 6 and 10. So the distributor will be here and it will just be like bouncing and oscillating between these positions because because it doesn't have enough force pushing on this to overcome the the tension to return normal so it it's just sitting here kind of doing this number and uh, that indicates that you need to tighten the clutch well i saw a little slower movement between here and here which is normal but what i like to do is set the clutch a little tighter than just bare necessary because sometimes there will be a little more weight on the belt or a little more a little more force on it than normal and that will prevent it from getting to 10 and cause a pile up so what we're going to do you can do this with the drive shaft on the machine or off the machine it's easier with it off but it's a pain to take it off make sure that this back end is off, otherwise you will probably lose a finger if the machine randomly turns on. You're gonna take it, and you're gonna apply counterclockwise pressure to get it off that nut. It's gonna come off, and you're gonna go one notch, just one, one notch tighter. And that has a significant difference. So, get out of the machine. You can see the machine is on, but I have the back end off, which is not necessarily recommended. Turn the back end on. Everything should operate normal. You see the distributor belt is turning. I'm going to sit ball step and cycle. That's going to set new pins and get everything working right. All right. And then do it one more time to push those pins back so they can then be elevated and run through the machine. Here it comes. It's a little slow, but it's adequate. And we're gonna try that. I usually do at least 10 operations. And if it looks good with 10 operations, I, st I stay with it. I keep the adjustment I have and I run the machine. What you will likely end up doing is getting it set to the baseline, running it two or three cycles, and then letting people bowl on it. And that's fine, but you just have to be prepared to come back here and adjust it. It's a balancing act between two things. How easy do pins go through the jaws? Do they stop and then have to force it down? And how, how well does the distributor operate between six and 10? There is also issues with seven, with the four to seven position, but it's more likely to be over here. If you're having trouble getting here, tighten the clutch. If you're having trouble getting pins off the jaws, loosen the clutch. If you're having trouble with both, that is, pins don't want to go through the jaws, and it won't, it won't get to this position, there's oil in the clutch. I can guarantee it. So if you have both the issues at once, redo this process.